Hi, I'm Jeremy and we're here at Gap Power taking a look at the differences in the uh, Honda snowblowers, specifically the HSS 1332 model. This is the non-electric start. This is the electric start version. So a couple differences uh, besides the apparent uh, electric, uh, non-electric start and electric start. Uh, on the non-electric start, we have the standard shroud. So when you're blowing snow, this thing's going to be going up and down to deflect the snow wherever you're looking to go. Um, and this is standard on all the Honda snowblowers, except for the electric start, <clears throat> which has the double bevel. It gives you a little bit more control over where the snow goes. Uh, you obviously have the option to go down a little bit more with it if you want to. Uh, of course, it'd be off to the side. Uh, it also makes a smoother transition, so snow doesn't tend to get clogged up in this area quite as much as it may in this one if you're trying to shoot snow more directly. Um, one of the other main features about the uh, electric non-electric start versus electric start is the uh, interlock under here. So we've got the transmission right here. We have the shear bolts right here. And if you something gets in here, the um, shear bolts will shear, and that way you protect your transmission. And that's standard on all the Honda snowblowers. Uh, you just simply pop a new bolt in, and away you go. On the electric start version, uh, they add a little bit to that. <clears throat> so you still have the same auger shear bolts, same transmission, uh, but up here we're going to add an auger interlock, uh, better known as a kill switch. Uh, so that sits right in here, wire runs up through here to the engine. If something were to get in here and stop the augers, uh, as opposed to just immediately shearing the shear bolts, this load sensing kill switch will actually turn the engine off and stop the augers maybe even before the shear bolts uh, shear, so hopefully you wouldn't have to get down and do that. It's not hard to do, but it's one less thing you have to do when you're out in this blowing snow. Okay, on the 1332 non-electric start, you have the key switch right here, off, on, pull the rope and it'll start up. On the 1332 electric start, you have the key here, which of course will start it up. Uh, you also have the hour meter indicator, which the uh, non-electric start does not have. And then, of course, we have the uh, auger lock indicator light, which if the auger lock kill switch up front is activated, if something gets in there and stops the auger, the auger will stop, the engine will shut off, the indicator light will come on. In that case, you would turn the machine off, remove the object, come back, turn the machine on, and hopefully, if all works right, you haven't broken any shear bolts, so you can just keep going. We're going to look a little bit at the differences between wheeled machines and track machines on the HSS uh, models Honda snowblowers. One of the big benefits of a wheel machine is, besides being a little bit cheaper than a track machine, they're a little bit more maneuverable, especially in tighter areas. So for example, if I have a sidewalk or a driveway where there's a lot of obstacles, maybe light posts, I can pretty easily maneuver this snowblower by grabbing the handles, like right here, grabbing the handles, releasing it, I'm moving forward, and then I can just pull it back, swing it around, and keep moving. Something that's a little bit harder to do with a track machine. Uh, like a track machine, you still have all the same options with the control on the head, the maneuverability, and the price of the two factors you want to consider when you're looking at a uh, wheeled machine. On a wheeled machine, you also have the height adjustment right here, and you have your auger protection right here. The front, the weight of this machine is always on the front, so they have extra protection right here to keep the auger from wearing away and to keep your height adjustment here at the correct, uh, at the correct height. Some of the reasons that you're going to buy a track machine are, unlike the wheel machine, you don't have the, you have the uh, protection right here, the uh, height adjustment in the back here. Nothing here necessarily because the height of the auger will keep it that way and you don't have to worry about pressure always being on the front. We'll talk about that in a minute where there is an additional item you can purchase to protect that area if you wish. Some of the benefits of a track machine are uh, the height of the auger. So if you have grass or stones, maybe a path back to a shed, a stone driveway, you have the option to, with this lever up top here and a hydraulic movement, you can raise the auger and snow blow with the auger actually raised up off the, f the ground. So you're not sucking up stones, you're not digging into the grass, and you have some pretty variable height there. You can go up pretty high, 
however you want to do that. And you can snow blow. That's technically a transport position, but it does give you more options uh, if you're not doing just on a hard surface. From the transport position where you can do grass and stones, you also have the option to put extra weight on the head to keep it digging into snow and ice if you have especially some rougher conditions. So to do that, you just simply lift up on the uh, high, uh, lever, push down the lever and lift up on the machine. It'll actually lift the front wheel just slightly up off the ground. All the pressure is starting back here. So the leverage from this point to the front, all that weight is pushing down on the head and the scraper bar so that you can work your way through ice and it keeps a lot more pressure down so that it doesn't ride up over some of the harder stuff. All the Honda track machines come with the height adjustment that sits down here in the back, sets the height, and you've also got the scraper bar underneath here that is also set to protect the auger in the front and the housing right here from touching the ground. Those two items are wear items and are designed to be scraping along the ground. One thing that you can add just to protect your housing from wear and to protect the auger teeth from wear is to add these side shoes that get bolted on to the side of this auger housing right here. One on each side, you set the height with the scraper bar and the shoe in the back here. And it just prevents any wear from occurring right here and any wear from occurring on the teeth of the auger as well. One of the things that we see coming into the shop after a snowblower has been in the field for years is often wear right here and then the teeth wearing down. You can prevent that by using these things on your track machine uh, to just any, any, any uh, up curve or anything like that on a driveway uh, will tend to hit here first. These will protect it from that. And over the course of the lifetime of the machine uh, will really aid in, in protecting this whole auger housing area front here. One of the other things you want to consider with a track machine is if you've got hills or areas where you're going to need more traction, you definitely have more traction on the bottom of a track, this area right here, versus a uh, tire machine just here on the bottom. One of the things you want to consider. The other is there's no air in a track. There's air pressure to be maintained on a tire. So one of the side benefits of having tracks versus having to maintain the air pressure and a tire on a wheel machine. So we're going to take a little bit of a look at the control panel on a Honda snowblower and they're pretty much the same across the board. Uh, this 1332 electric start model will obviously have the uh, hour meter and the key ignition. So let's just start at that for a moment. Uh, you got the key start right here on and then continue going to start. Your choke is right here. Of course, if it's cold, you'll be using that keep moving right across here. This thumb pressure switch controls the hydraulic shaft that raises and lowers the machine. If you can see down here, we've got this hydraulic arm right here. So when I'm depressing the switch, it's allowing that to move up and down. I'm adjusting the height of my auger in the front with a quick thumb switch versus the old foot switch like the old machines would have had. Right here, we've got the auger uh, lock the drive clutch. I'm sorry, the drive clutch right here. The auger lock on this side here. When you're holding the drive in and you depress the auger, <clears throat> you can then have your right hand free to do all the functions up here as you're driving and the auger is spinning. If I let up on the drive clutch, both of them pop up. I can run just each independently, but if I have them both down. I can release the auger and it will continue spinning so that I have my hand is free to do other functions. The handles here on the bottom control the hydraulics. All Honda's two-stage snowblowers are hydraulically driven. When I squeeze these handles, I then am able to freewheel the unit around, uh, whether you're in your garage storing it or even just to back up, especially handy on the uh, wheel models, which are just as fast to disengage the transmission when you're pulling it back as it is to go into reverse, which they all do have. Um, the other thing that allows you to do is, is to steer. So if I squeeze this handle and I let this one out, the, aug the machine will turn to the left. If I depress the right hand, of course, then it goes that way as the left is driving, turns to the right. One, to one side to turn, both of them to just freewheel. Up on top here, we then have the auger chute. So this joystick will make the front go down, make the front come up to the right, to the left. I'll just quick show you that here. So as I'm moving this joystick, the head up here is gonna be moving as well. 
So I'll just fire that up and try that. To the right, to the left, up, and down. I also have the forward and reverse right here. So if I put it in forward, it's a constant drive. Um, I, can, I can control the speed again by these handles on, under here on the side here. So I, if, if, I'm, if I have it full speed and I squeeze both handles slowly, I can slow down the blower without having to move this handle here. But this also sets your speed for how fast you're gonna be going. This lever is simply the throttle. Whenever you're blowing, you always have it full throttle. If you're transporting it or you're finished blowing, uh, you can just pull it back to half throttle if you're driving it. But always when you're using it, when you're blowing snow, you're going to always have it full throttle uh, so that everything's working as it should be.